Hi guys, this is Justin Fireisen, and you are listening to 88.7 WRFW River Falls, Wisconsin. And I have a great show for you planned today. I'm going to talk about Alex Ryder Operation Stormbreaker, the 2006 British film, because the new book came out in that same series. This is one of the movies I was so pumped for. I was so excited for this movie. I drove, my parents drove me an hour and a half to Eden Prairie to see this movie because it was a British film and it wasn't released anywhere closer than Eden Prairie. So I got on the B Honor Roll, and it was like the only time in my life I've ever gotten on the B Honor Roll. And my parents drove me, like I said, an hour and a half to see this movie. And I was such a huge fan of the original book series by Anthony Horwitz, and I was so looking forward to this movie for such a long time. And I finally saw it, and I was very disappointed with everything. This is one of the things where they adapted a book, and the book is an amazing classic, but the film adaption it got a lot of stuff wrong. And it's directed by Jeffrey Sachs. He, the only other movie I've seen that he directed was the Doctor Who movie from 1996. And I enjoyed that movie. I got it from the library. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. And that's my favorite Doctor was the seventh. And he, that's the one where he regenerates. So I didn't know that at the time. But years later, I saw that movie. And I'm like, that's a good movie. But this movie sucks. The cast is... They got some great actors. Bill Nye from the Pirates of the Caribbean, he plays Davy Jones. Stephen Fry, he plays Smithers. He was uh, the master of Lake Town in the Hobbit films. Andy Serkis is one of the most amazing actors ever, and he's one of the henchmen. He's Gollum in Lord of the Rings, Caesar, the Planet of the Apes reboot, King Kong in the Peter Jackson film, Captain Haddock in an underrated movie, uh, Steven Spielberg, The Adventure of His Tintin, and Ian McGregor. Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, from the prequel films, is in this movie. So, this is about this kid. Is He's an orphan. He's being raised by his uncle in London. And, unknown to him, his uncle is a secret spy. He's a spy for MI6. And he tells the kid that he works in a bank, but he's a spy, and he goes on one of his missions, says he's on a business trip, but it's an undercover secret mission. And, on this mission, the unfortunate thing happens, and he dies. So now, he's at the funeral, he meets his bank co-workers, and they're actually the head of MI6, they're high-ranking officials in MI6, and they're like, you've trained your whole life to be the secret agent, your uncle was taking you rock climbing, he was taking you scuba diving, you're a black, almost a black belt in karate, you know, all these other martial arts, and you've been training your whole life to be a spy, but he's like, I'm a 14-year-old kid, I got school, I got homework, and I cannot be a spy. Well, they're like, we have this mission for you, and we need you to be a spy because you're trained your whole life to be a spy. He doesn't want to be a spy, but he's a, he becomes a spy. And Alex Ryder is supposed to be this 14-year-old normal high school kid who happens to be trained his whole life to be a spy, and he's very well adjusted to be a spy. The kid was 15 at the time, Alex Pettifer. And I didn't, I've seen him since in Elvis and Nixon, where he plays Jerry Schilling, and he was amazing in that movie. But this movie, I'm, I'm so I'm like they didn't cast the right kid though. Like I said in my other things, like talking about it last week or ET last week, there is a lot of great movies with great child actors. But there's also a lot of movies with not great child actors. And he passed on Aragon, which is a movie I haven't seen, but I've heard really awful things about Aragon to do this movie. And this movie was supposed to set up a franchise, but it didn't because. It wasn't received well. It didn't make back the money it was. The author of the book, Anthony Horwitz, actually was a screenwriter on this. And they had to change a lot of stuff, which I think negatively affected, impacted the movie. You have the kid who I think they cast. He's too tall. He looks a lot older than he actually is. And I just don't believe him as this 14-year-old boy. The point of having a 14-year-old spy is you don't believe he's a spy. And he's good to sneak undercover and do stuff because nobody would ever suspect a child being a spy. And there are so many scenes where in the book where he's tracking down his uncle's car and he goes in the junkyard and he's doing all these detective things and in the movie they're like, action, 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 action. It's a movie we've got to have action scenes. The action scenes are well done. I just don't think they sit, suit the source material and they suit the characters. The action scene was choreographed by stunts by Donnie Yen who was Chirrut in Star Wars Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. 
and he's a very good actor, and the stunts were good. I just didn't think they fit the character, and they didn't fit the story. Like, in the book, there's a scene where he sneaks down to a junkyard, and there's one thug, and he tries to be, I, 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 I'm lost, how do I get back to school, and he does that, and then when he looks away, he knocks out the knees and runs away and stuff. In the book, he, it's not one guy, it's, I mean, I'm sorry, in the movie, it's not one guy, it's five guys. And he picks up just a random rope and just starts swinging it around willy-nilly and trying to tie up their legs and stuff. I know, I don't care if he's been rock climbing, I don't care if he's a, almost a black belt in karate, I don't think any 14 or old kid can start, go cowboy and start swinging a rope and knocking out people's legs. That's something Indiana Jones might do, but not 14-year-old Alex Ryder. They added extra characters. They added Sabrina Pleasure as a love interest because, of course, every movie needs a love interest. This book didn't have a love interest, and I think it worked great. In the movie, you add the Sabrina Pleasure, who is a character from the books, but she doesn't show up until the third book, and then in the fifth book, you, she finds out his secret identity. She's introduced in the first movie. At the end of the first movie, he's like, you're a spy, but I won't tell anybody. I'm like, this ruins this character arc, this ruins character development that they established way better in other media. They establish it much slower versus... And even, what would they have done with book two when this character is in it, but they have to force... In the second book, he goes off into Europe in the Alps as a boarding school children, and what, they're going to take his love interest along on that one too? It didn't make a sequel, and it's for the, be it's for the best. But they added this character... And then they add in an action sequence at the end where she's, I'm really good at horseback riding. I'm going to ride my horse through London to get from point A to B faster so we can stop the bad guy. And this is ridiculous. This is silly. This is supposed to be the serious spy movie. And they made it too silly. Maybe it was silly in the books, but in a book, if it's silly, you can kind of, the disbelief, you can... In the movie, it just comes off as silly. It comes out ridiculous. In the book, MI6 is in a building that's disguised as a bank. And you get there, and it looks like an actual bank. And then they get in the back room, and in the basement, in the attic is, oh, this is a secret spy agency. In the movie, he goes to the mall. He goes to a photo booth, puts his money in the photo booth. They take a picture of him. He's like, oh, this kid we want in our secret spy agency. So we're going to send you through a series of mazes to get to the spy headquarters. And I'm like... That is ridiculous. That would not happen. This is stupid. And then they add his housekeeper, who they just make her too silly. They make her too willy-nilly. And then they have another character that breaks into her house after finding out that this kid isn't who he says he is. And then they have this fight sequence, which no, this these, this character doesn't know how to shouldn't know how to fight. She's the housekeeper. She knows how to clean and cook and. She's not a spy. She hasn't had any of these spy trainings. And yet she's doing all these karate moves and jujitsu moves and all these... It just makes no sense. They end the fight by picking up a puffer fish that she... And she throws it at the bad guy. And I'm like, this makes no sense. This is ridiculous. You ruined one of my favorite childhood books. And made it into a crappy movie. And I am so glad that they didn't adapt the other 11, now 12 films books because they didn't do the first one right and this was a series that could have worked amazing the books are amazing and the new one just came out the first one came in 2001 it's kind of evolving as the audience i love the books i'm on chapter four this new one and i am i am loving this new book and i just wish the movie series could have been done better